These are our basic starting materials for the Diels-Alder reaction. And what we want to do now is explain the Diels-Alder with our new molecular orbital theory. So we need to use molecular orbitals to explain this. So the first thing we have to do, last time at the end, we drew a whole bunch of different, we did a bunch of examples of different molecular orbital pictures. So that's what we have to do here. We have to show what the molecular orbitals look like for the diene and the dienophile. So uh, let's write down, what, do, what does the molecular orbital diagram look like for the diene and the dienophile? And then we can use that to explain the result. We need to show one of those charts with all the different levels for all the different molecular orbitals to start with, just like we were doing at the very end of the last session. that you also labeled the HOMO and the LUMO for each of these. Although, what do we care about for the diene? Do we care about the diene's HOMO or its LUMO? Mm -hmm. So I'm actually only going to bother label labeling the HOMO here because that's the only one we actually care about in this case. Remember that we saw last time that we should think of the diene as the nucleophile. It's the one that's donating electrons. Well, where can it find the most accessible electrons in the highest energy state over here, the HOMO? And who do we care about over here? The Illumo. Because we saw that we're treating the dienophile as an um, electrophile. So this is going to receive electrons. Well, what, what's the best place to put their electrons in the lowest unoccupied state? Um, something I forgot to mention last time is what we talked about how when we have two shaded regions next to each other or two unshaded, that, that's a bonding interaction. But we didn't talk about why that's a bonding interaction. 
we should just briefly remember that all of this is based on a kind of wave theory. Uh, have you guys taken physics? No. All right. Well, anyway, when you take some physics, you'll see that one way to think about electrons is as waves. You are correct. Thank you. Although, actually, to be consistent with how I drew the others, that was a mistake. I should have. Since I was starting with the shaded on the right here, I should probably have done that here too. That was a mistake, right? So what I was going to say is, if we think about this in wave theory, when two shaded regions are next to each other, we should think of that as constructive interference between waves. Waves that have constructive interference, that gives us a high probability that electrons would be in that area. And then this type of interaction between two unlike regions would be destructive interference. And then the node is when there's um, zero chance of the electron being in that region because of the destructive interference. We don't need to get too much into the wave theory for an OCAM class. But the bonding and, inter and anti-bonding interactions really represent either constructive or destructive interference. And do you need to show the nodes or the dashed lines or not? Depends on what the question asks you for. There's a good chance that they would ask you to show the nodes. And in that case, you should. And we've seen what the pattern is. We always start with zero nodes. Then there's one, two, and then three up here. So yeah, if you wanted to, you could show the nodes. Now, by the way, this is a little ambiguous. There's always a node. There's always a horizontal node. The middle of a p orbital always represents a node itself, but people kind of tend to ignore that because that's everywhere. So when people say there's zero nodes here, they mean zero vertical nodes. And then there's one vertical node here, and two vertical nodes here, and three vertical nodes here. All of them have the one horizontal node. That's what this line really represents here, the horizontal node. That's just a technicality. Something else I wanted to say uh, that we were, we were just mentioning here is there's really, say, two different legal ways to draw each of these molecular orbitals. For example, this molecular orbital could also, be, could also have been drawn It could also have been drawn like this, because this also has one node. These are really equivalent to each other, so you could draw them either way. Probably it's best to be consistent. Since I started here with the shaded region on the left, I should probably start each of these with the shaded region on the left. But this would also be a legal way to draw the one node case. Now what we have to do is draw the molecular orbital diagram for the transition state for the Diels alder. It looks like you guys were already kind of starting on that. So I still think that it's very useful to put in these asterisks here and these dots here. Again, like I mentioned last time, the dots don't, don't indicate radicals. They're just labels for the two ends of the, for the two interacting atoms from the dyne file. By the way, how did we know there would be four molecular orbitals here? Because there's four overlapping p orbitals, right? One, two, three, four overlapping p orbitals, so four molecular orbitals. And here there's two overlapping p orbitals, so there's two molecular orbitals. Notice that this is the best way to draw this. You guys might have been more inclined to draw it like this. But if you draw it like this, it's just a little bit harder to show the p orbitals. So it's good to draw this a little bit at a slant, so you can actually show all the p orbitals here. So they're not just overlapping with this bond. Normally, when we draw Diels Alder, we draw this line vertical. But in this case, it's better to draw this line at a little bit of a slant so that it doesn't interfere with our drawing of the orbitals. That just makes our picture a little cleaner. So, this is not a very good picture. This is a better picture than the molecular orbital diagram. Now, this was supposed to represent, I'll put in my asterisks again. This represents the diene. So, which of these four pictures should I use? Since this represents the diene, we decided the diene was going to use its homo, so I'm going to put in these shades. Shaded on top, shaded on top, shaded on the bottom, shaded on the bottom. We just used the homo picture from the diene. 